This is the Sony ZV-E10. It has a 24.2 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor, 425 face detect plus 425 contrast detect autofocus points, an ISO range of 100 up to 32,000. It has a electronic stabilization. It can do 4K up to 30 frames per second, 1080p up to 120 frames per second. It does not have a viewfinder. It is compatible with one SD card. It has a fully articulating LCD screen with limited touchscreen functionality, max burst of 11 frames per second for 116 JPEGs, and it weighs only 346 grams. But as always, we want to know if this camera is any good. What is happening guys, Gary Yaman here, back at it again with a new video. Hope you're doing well, hope you're safe and happy. So, as I mentioned, is this camera any good? In order to answer that big question, I'm gonna divide this video in several sections. And the first section will be all about the build quality. This camera is made from plastic and it really reminds me of the Sony A6000, a camera that was released way back in 2014. And the moment that you have it in your hands, it actually feels like a Sony A6000, but it also feels really good in the hand, even though the grip is non-existing. And what you notice right away is that this guy does not have a viewfinder. Uh, but other than that, it's also not weather sealed. So if you ever find yourself in bad weather conditions, just keep in mind that you need to protect this camera because it's not weather sealed whatsoever. Other than that, it does not have any built-in flash as well, but it does come with a nice built-in microphone with a dead cat on it. That is something that I really appreciate and that you can see right away that this camera is especially made for vloggers, but just in general, uh, creating internet videos and stuff like that. But when it comes down to the build quality itself, I think that if this is your first camera ever, then you will really appreciate and like this build quality because it actually feels really robust. The buttons feels really nice. It doesn't feel like cheap at all. Uh, also the screen looks really good. Keep in mind though, this screen is not touch screen. And that is something that I didn't really like because now in 2021, we have a lot of touch screens, right? But this guy still, this camera does not have any touch screen uh, functionalities when it comes down to scrolling down the menu or switching your settings but it does have touchscreen functionality when it comes down to like uh, touch to focus or just pinch in uh, on your photos, but that's about it. But in general, the build quality I think is really good and I have no real complaints other than it's not weather sealed. So let's continue to more interesting stuff and that is the image quality. And this image quality section, we're gonna divide it also in two sections in two different categories the first one will be about the photography side of things and the second one will be about video. So let's talk about photography. So even though this camera is made especially for vloggers and filmmakers in general, this is also really good at taking pictures. So as you see here, this is a little picture of myself, very detailed and very sharp as you see, and I like the colors of it as well. But also you can do all tons of other stuff. You can also do product photography, as you see right here, but also you can do some landscape, nature shots, cityscape, and all kinds of things. So I think it's a very versatile camera when it comes down to photography, and it really depends on your own needs, right? So the files that you get from this camera when it comes down to photography, the raw files that is, you can easily edit those files and it looks really great. And I think, for this kind of money, for 750 euros, by the way, this camera here in the Netherlands will cost you 750 euros. I think you get a great photo camera. But next to that, we got also a great video camera because as I mentioned, this camera is specially made for vloggers and stuff like that. But when it comes down to the video quality, as you see right here, this image, what you're seeing right now, this piece, this footage was on the Sony ZV-E10. And when you put it side by side to the Sony a7 III, which is a full frame camera, it will cost you around, these days, around 1800 euros. The image quality is almost the same, right? I think it's, it's actually sometimes even better. I think the image quality, when it comes down to the 4K quality uh, from this Sony ZV, ZV E10 is really on par with the Sony a7 III. And that also means it is on par 
with the Sony's A7S III, right? It looks really good, 4K looks pretty awesome. I shoot in a picture profile called HLG. I think that's picture profile 10 and it looks pretty good. And even in 1080p, things are looking pretty sweet as well. As you see here, 4K on the left, 1080p on the right, and it looks roughly the same. In 1080p, you have the option to go up to 120 frames per second to have some nice slow motion. And in that slow motion range, you can also shoot in the same picture profile if you need to. And that looks really sweet as well. And honestly guys, if I didn't have my Sony a7 III, I would use this Sony ZV-E10 without a shadow of a doubt and use it each and every day for making these type of videos. So what about the low light image quality? Well, as you see here, things are looking pretty mushy, but I think it's still very right. usable. Filming now and I think even ISO with a better lens and with a little bit better lighting settings, even in dark situations like that, I think you get some great results as well. So the image quality for both photo and video seems to be really good, right? But there's one, one huge issue when it comes down to the video side of things, and that is the rolling shutter issue. And as you see here, the um, lamp post should be straight, but it's not straight at all. It's a little bit jelly, and uh, I'm not sure what the technical reason is, but in general, the uh, sensor speed the writing speed and stuff is not fast enough to capture all this stuff in 4K. So in order to have it as fast as possible, um, I recommend to shoot in 1080p so that you can limit the amount of rolling shutter issue that you are seeing right now. So here is a footage of 1080p and there it looks much better than the 4K. So in general, aside from that rolling shutter issue, the 4K and also 1080p coming out of this camera is looking really good and also the photography side of things i like it i like it so image quality if i have to give it a like a number like a rating i would give it a 9 out of 10. so now the next section that is the performance and the features of this camera what i mean with performance i mean the autofocus performance and also the battery performance first of all the autofocus performance is actually better than on my Sony a7 III because it has eye autofocus in video, but also for uh, for animals, but also for, of course, for people. Uh, it has a better tracking feature than on the Sony a7 III. So when it comes down to autofocus, it is really good. Also for photography, the autofocus is really nice and I don't have any complaints when it comes down to the whole autofocus department. And what about battery life or the battery performance? It's not the best. I highly recommend getting at least one extra battery, but I do recommend at least having two extra batteries. It's not the most expensive at all, but I do want to mention that the battery life is not good if you want to shoot videos and photos for the full day. Let's talk about a little bit more about the features. We also got uh, electronic in-body stabilization. Uh, it is not a mechanical type of uh, stabilization. And honestly, I don't really like how it, how it works. It doesn't look really good at all actually so the ibis is like a nice feature but it also has a really heavy crop so for me personally i don't really use it when it comes down to features in photography we do have the option to shoot in 11 frames per second as you're seeing right now but you do have that buffer as you see um, so keep that in mind as well. Another nice feature to have is that you can use this camera as a webcam. But if you shoot in 4K, you will get a delay. But if you shoot in 1080p, the delay is then suddenly gone. So keep that in mind. If you want to use this camera as a webcam, switch it to 1080p. And this camera also has a time-lapse feature as you're seeing right now. And things are looking pretty sweet as well. You can also shoot this in a picture profile or a log profile. Again, I shoot in HLG. All right, so we've talked about the build quality. That was really good. Image quality was really good, except for that rolling shutter issue. Uh, the performance, autofocus performance, really nice. Battery performance was okay. And then also we got a lot of features and I even think that I'm missing some features. I'm not sure, but I guess so. But there are some downsides, of course, uh, for not having a real touchscreen capabilities and stuff like that. It doesn't have a EVF. It doesn't have a built-in flash. The IBIS is also not that great. Um, but other than that, I think this is a really good camera. So if you ask me if this is any good, the answer is definitely a big yes. I think that's about it for this video, guys. 
uh, thank you again for watching subscribe to the channel if not already and like the video of course if you got any questions about the sony zve 10 or zve 10 let me know in the comment section down below as always stay safe stay healthy see you in the next one